Hi, my name is Annalisa Fitzsimons and I'm one of our directors of Christian education here at St. Luke's Lutheran Church and School. Um, so I have a little devotional thought for you today and we are reading in 2 Timothy 3. So the verse we're focusing on today is verse 16, uh, but I'm going to start a little bit ahead um, in the beginning of chapter 3. It's talking about godlessness in the last days. But mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of God, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So I don't know if it is the last days, I don't think so, but this sounds pretty familiar to me. And it's really easy to say, you know, I know a lot of people that are like this. There's a lot of people who are lovers of money, who are boastful, who are proud. Uh, but then I think about myself and I think, you know, is my four-year-old disobedient to me occasionally? Yes. Um, but am I still disobedient to my own mother? Am I still um, unforgiving or slanderous or without self-control? Yeah, these are... Um, these are some qualities that I have and I hate to see that and I hate to be confronted with the sin in my life, but I can see a lot of these qualities in myself. And so what do we do? I hope, I hope that you recognize your sin enough to see some of these qualities in yourself as well. Um, so the question today is what, what's the fix? What are we to do about it? And I think a lot of us, when we see sin in ourselves, or for me as a parent, if you're a parent, sin in your children, uh, disobedience or any of those things, we love self-help books. The self-help book is amazing. They, they sell them about every single thing. If you have addiction, there's a self-help book for that. If you have sexual sin, there's a self-help book for that. If you need to have better sleep at night, there's a self-help book for that. There are self-help help, self -help books for every single thing. Now, I'm not quite into the self-help books. I could say, you know, I know that I can go to God's word for help for myself. But what I have bought books for is parenting because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so these are all uh, books that we have in our office, uh, our family education office, uh, that are about parenting or how to raise the right child, how to how to teach your kid about Jesus. And while these are so valuable, um, I mean, we have all of these. I'm not throwing these away after this video. Um, they're valuable, but we just always forget what we have here in scripture um, for ourselves and for parenting. So what's the fix? What do we do when we recognize our sin? What do we do when we recognize sin or disobedience in our children? And I'm gonna go down a little bit further um, to chapter three, verse 14. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of because you know those from whom you have learned it and how from infancy you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Um, so from infancy, uh, especially for my children, from infancy, they have been hearing about the word of God. And what the word of God does, what the Holy Scriptures do, is they make us wise to salvation. So we know that through our faith in Jesus Christ, because of his death on the cross, that we get to be with him forever in heaven. We are wise to salvation. We know that we get to be with Jesus one day. We know how to get to heaven and that is only through belief in Jesus Christ. So what do we do now? Do we need the self-help books? Do we throw them away? Do we toss this um, Bible and say, you know, I know that I get to be in heaven with Jesus, so why why would I do anything? Um, and this is where we learn uh, why we don't always need self-help books, that we only need um, this book here. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. While we're still here, before we get to go see Jesus, we know that we need to fill our lives with righteousness. We need to fill our lives with doing good works for God. And how do we do those things? The only way that we can do good things, the only way that we can teach our children uh, to be followers of Jesus, that we can teach our children uh, to do right things. The only way that we can do right things um, is through our faith in Jesus. And because of our faith in Jesus, we know that he gave us this. And what I think is so special about this verse is it says, all scripture is God breathed. That means 
that God gave us this book to help us parent our children, to help us live our best lives, to give us wisdom. He wants to give us, he wants to make us wise to salvation. He wants to make us wise to righteousness through his word. And it's just so special that it is God breathed. That means it is a living book. You can read the Bible over and over and over and over again. And every time it's going to give you a new piece of wisdom. God speaks to you. This is God breathed. He speaks to you through this book. I'm not saying that these are not valuable. There are so many great Christian books that point to the scripture and help us interpret the scripture. But I'm just here to remind you today that this book is the book that will equip you uh, to live a life full of righteousness. So you only really need the Bible. You might need some of these on occasion uh, and you can use them in study, uh, but the Bible is God breathed. God gave us this book um, and it has so much in there for us to learn. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you be with me as I parent my two children. I pray that you would help me to use your scripture to teach them how to live right lives, how to live a life of righteousness, and to know that when they make a mistake or when I make a mistake, um, to know that we are forgiven by you, that you provide forgiveness through your death on the cross. Jesus, we are so thankful uh, that we get to be with you forever, and I just pray that you would continue to make us wise to salvation, that you continue to help us to know that you are continuing to equip us through every step of our lives. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming. Bye.